Hi everyone, this is the start of the practice placement into Math 14, uh, 31. For uh, this one I'm getting is from University of Houston. And these are problems uh, 1 through 6. So if you uh, have a practice set, it won't look exactly like this one because the numbers will be a little different. Um, this first one that we have, we have to express the domain of this function in interval notation. And the main thing you need to know is that um, the domain of just anything under the square root sign is x has to be greater than or equal to 0. So just in general. And remember the graph kind of looks like that. So that's your domain of just the parent function. So when we have something like this, we're going to just set this quantity to be greater than or equal to 0 and then solve for x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the 8x over. I'm adding 8x to both sides and dividing both sides by 8. And then I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as x is less than or equal to 5 eighths because that's just the way I am. So that means... Um, it has to be less than or equal to 5 eighths, and it has to be less than. So it's negative infinity to 5 eighths. All right? The next one we have is give the x-intercepts of this rational equation. And basically, remember, the x-intercepts is when y is 0. We're going to have 2 here, so I'm just going to make 2. So this means this is my y, so I want to make that 0. So 0 equals, and I'm going to go ahead and factor, x plus 3 times x minus 2 over, uh, the denominator really doesn't matter, that's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 1. Now, when I cross multiply, what happens is, when I cross these two, 0 times my denominator it's just zero, so that really goes away. So technically what you're doing is you're just looking at the numerator. So we're setting this uh, zero to x plus three and also to x minus two. And that would leave um, uh, x is negative three, like three, and x is two. So those are your x-intercepts. You're just solving here for x. All right, next one. We have to find the inverse of uh, this. I find most students have a hard time with this. So basically, uh, to find the inverse, what you're doing is you're switching the x and the y's. And the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to just do it here, is change this to y. And then I'm going to interchange my x and my y's. So I'm going to write x equals 3y plus 2 over 2y plus 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. I'll put my this part in fraction form. So I get x times 2y plus 1 equals 3y plus 2. Simplify the left side. And then you solve for y. So what I'm going to do is group my y's together. I'm going to put them on the left side, so I'm actually subtracting 3y, and I'm adding x to both sides, so that will cancel, so we get, um, we're subtracting, what did I put plus? Alright, subtracting x from both sides. Alright, so that's going to give you negative x plus 2. Now, you factor out, since we're solving for y, factor out this y here. The, the highest common factor or the greatest common factor. And then you just divide both sides by 2x minus 3. Alright? Now, the way they have it, I'm going to pull out the negative here. I think that's what I have. But let me look. Um, when I pull out a negative, I'm just putting the numerator. I pull out a negative, that's going to be x minus 2 over 
2x minus 3. And so that, I'm again using the greatest common factor. So the uh, inverse is g of x. This is g of x equals this. And that's your answer. All right. The next ones are um, just evaluating. And you have three of these. So I suggest before you uh, take your placement test that you really get to know your unit circle or some of you if you learned it by the graph. You also need to know the even odd properties because that's what I used. I, I put those down at the very last slide of this video. Um, you have to know that sine is an odd property. So I'm going to bring out this negative and write it like this. Hopefully you know your radians. If not, you can convert. This is a, if you want to convert to degrees, this will be negative sine of 210. And if you know your unit circle, you know 210 is right there. You know sine is the vertical portion, so it's a 30 degree uh, reference angle, so that's negative one half is your sine. Cosine would be negative root 3 over 2. We're in quadrant. 3, so both the uh, cosine and sine would be negative. So anyway, I'm going to write negative and sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So two negatives make a positive, so my uh, evaluation is sine of negative 7 pi over 6 is 1 half. Same thing with cosine. This one's actually easier. It's an even function. So all I'm going to do is I know that I can just write this as sine of pi over 3. Remember, cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and 4. So this one basically is in quadrant 4. We know this is a 60 degrees. If I just kind of draw it, um, 60 degrees is here. So you know that sine is longer. And cosine, oh, sorry. The longer part is the root 3 over 2. The shorter part is 1 half. And the same thing if you put it down here. My cosine is still going to be positive. That's why it's called an even function. So basically it's 1 half. All right, and the last one, the tangents. Uh, it's an odd property, so I'm going to write, pull out the negative and just call it negative tan over pi over 4. Now, we know that tan um, is y over x, and pi over 4 is 45 degrees, so that's root 2 over 2, and root 2 over 2. So when you divide those, that's 1. So you get negative times 1 equals negative 1. All right, and then um, I wrote down the theorem for the even and odd properties here. The only two that are even are cosine and secant, and I think that will help you out. Because remember, uh, secant is just the uh, reciprocal of cosine, and on those two, um, this is quadrant 1 and 4. All right? So that's why they're even. Um, the others are all odd. All right, that's all. And I will continue on with the next problem set. Thank you, and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.